South Africa looks set to lose up to half a million jobs over the next 18 months. That's the warning contained in the latest AdCorp Employment Index. Loan Sharp compiled the index. Welcome, Loan. Thank you, Erica. Rather bad news. What's the methodology? How did you get to this conclusion of the significant mm -hmm. job loss? Mm -hmm. uh, incidentally, in the context of policymakers claiming to be on the road to creating jobs. Yes. Well, there's a big disconnect between what's happening on the ground and what is being promised by policymakers. The method we use basically is to monitor the million to two million job applications we receive a year and estimate from those how many people go into employment. And that we extrapolate to the rest of the economy and we get an estimate of what uh, employment uh, is uh, and how it's changing on a monthly basis. What we then do is extrapolate labor productivity in relation to wage settlements. So wage settlements are running at a moment labor productivity is declining by about four percent year over year and uh, we make an estimate of how companies budgets need to shrink uh, to to basically meet meet budget uh, and then we estimate how many jobs that involves so uh, there are various assumptions as there always are in this kind of estimate but we think they're realistic uh, the economy is in a decisive period of jobless growth already to the extent that for example the retail sector uh, has production levels of 20 percent higher than the pre-recession peak which was already very high so our retail sector is completely recovered but it's shedding jobs still to this day and that's because there's overstaffing in most of our industries there's declining productivity in most of our industries and and that's really how we arrive at this uh, staggering number but it is a, a shot across the bow for policymakers who have really produced fanciful ideas about how to uh, create five million jobs just the immediate figures for July, you measure 0.4% decline in employment. That's the third consecutive month of decline. So by implication then for the next few months, this is an ongoing trend you see. This is a trend, uh, very much so. If you want to translate it in how many jobs were lost, uh, that 0.4% translates into just short of 80,000 jobs lost. Uh, last uh, week, Stats SA produced their figures for the first quarter of this year, which showed 174,000 people became unemployed. Uh, so yes, our, our figures very much line up with what is going on with Stats SA's figures. Um, and uh, yes, it's difficult times for, for, for job seekers. The most problematic thing is that uh, the economy cannot absorb, absorb the half a million job seekers who will come out of the tertiary and secondary education systems this year. Uh, in fact, there are 600,000 unemployed graduates in the economy. The situation out there could not be more terrifying. Your figures confirm what we also know from Stats SA, and I think anecdotally also, that the public sector is the only sector that's creating jobs. Yes, well, it's not really job creation in a technical sense because uh, those jobs are funded by the taxpayer. Uh, what's happening is government uh, is expanding its workforce, it's expanding its payroll. There are hundreds of thousands of people in the government sector whose uh, grades, job grades, have been increased. So the government is bloating the middle management sector with people who were previously in administrative and clerical roles. So there's a loss of managerial skill within government. There's a bloating of the payroll. Uh, and, and these are irreversible trends, right? Because yes. eventually that becomes part of the pension payment mm. that taxpayers need to fund. Yes, no, there will never be job shedding in government. Uh, the big the big problem is that those jobs are not productive. They add to bureaucracy. They add to red tape. Uh, so you that know, is a sweeping statement, Lone. Uh, well, it is, but that is our experience of it. You know, the Department of Home Affairs uh, has added uh, a huge numbers to its headcount. New departments are being created all the time, uh, but there's no obvious improvement. Uh, it still takes seven years for a, a foreign work permit application to be processed at Home Affairs. So. Uh, you know, there's no obvious improvement in governmental performance for all these people that are being added. Yes. So clearly lots to do, lots of work to be done in government. In the private sector, the hardest hit, mining and manufacturing. The manufacturing job loss is certainly consistent with what we're seeing in the PMI indices. Yes, very much so. Mining and manufacturing have been especially hard hit by the strikes uh, of the recent past. Uh, in fact, uh, this is a trend. South Africa has previously had about a three month long strike season. That has now extended to between eight and ten months. Uh, we're anticipating ten months of strikes this year. Uh, we haven't even seen local government and uh, central government come into 
which they will do. Uh, we're predicting that from 14.6 uh, million man days lost due to strikes last year, that will rise to 17.8 million this year, and more than 20 million uh, in, in 2012. Uh, 2013. Um, just to give you some historical context, the highest ever level of strikes in South Africa was during the rolling mass action in, uh, under apartheid, and that was 9 million workdays lost per year. So we're looking at a doubling or a more than doubling of industrial conflict. South Africa already ranks the uh, seventh worst country in the world out of 139 countries uh, evaluated by the World Economic yes. Forum in terms of our labor competitiveness. So, you know, the economy is going to continue shedding jobs until we address the factors that are driving poor labor market effectiveness. Well, let's get constructive. What, in your views, are the, the true weaknesses? We see policymakers wanting to step in and creating jobs, investors, how they need to behave. How mm. should we be acting? Well. The first thing we have to do is go back to the initial legislation in post-apartheid South Africa and ask if it's still relevant, if it ever was relevant. I mean, the Labor Relations Act makes it impossible uh, virtually for companies to dismiss for performance reasons, although it is easier for companies to dismiss for uh, or to retrench during difficult economic times. And what that does is it really prevents companies from employing altogether. Uh, because uh, there's just too much risk in employing someone who will then withhold their performance. Uh, so we have to go back and scrap that. Uh, dismissal protections are extremely poor for the country. Our collective bargaining system was supposed to produce industrial peace. It's produced one of the highest levels of in industrial conflict in the world. We've got to go back and scrap those parts of the Labor Relations Act that don't work and clearly are not working for the country. But uh, there's no prospect. The four labor laws and regulations that are up for amendment at NEDLAC at the moment are going to take us back to the 1970s in terms of how draconian labor laws uh, in South Africa will be. So we have a, a really disastrous yes. situation. I mean, the big government policy option is do we attend to how luxurious the working conditions are for the 13 million people who have jobs? Or do we concentrate on finding work for the 8.5 million people who have no jobs and no prospects yes. of finding them? No, just briefly, the factors you described, these are institutional factors hindering mm -hmm. job creation. By implication, then, what I'm hearing, even if we do have better growth, which theoretically ought to stimulate employment, we're not going to see enough of that. It might still be job loss or, at best, jobless growth. Yes, well, we are in it, and we've been in this state of jobless growth for 18 months. Uh, uh, it's a grave disappointment to the government who's been relying on fast rates of economic growth. Uh, even the organization community says that 7 to 8 percent economic growth a year will stimulate job creation. It's not going to happen. We've got to go back to the root causes rather than hope that by uh, sort of stimulating the patient with steroids we can overcome bronchitis. It's not going to happen. Loan, thank you very much. That's Loan Sharp. He's a labor market analyst at AdCorp.